the battery in it. I'm gonna turn it on. And here you got the date and time. I really don't have uh, a watch on me right now, so I can just pretty much put in the general stuff that I know, like what year it is, um, the month, and the date. It's probably like nine or something. I don't know. As a guess, I'm just gonna do nine. Oh, what day? I don't know. I'm not sure. But automatically is gonna give you like what time they think it is, like what time zone. There's no memory card in there currently, so bear with me. Here we are. Um, this is quite an intelligent camera, I gotta say. During the main functions, you have access to. Oh, hold on. Well, because I'm in already in automatic mode, the power IS, which is the image stabilizer, decoration, which just pretty much puts uh, lines and little colorful artwork over the pictures while you're recording or after. And you can adjust the zoom, which, you know, for me, I don't really use very much. So, I mean, you know, it's there, but let's see that I don't know, take it to the menu features. This is where all the good stuff is. <coughs> So obviously you have auto, manual, and then there's cinema. Cinema, I gotta say, is very good as far as with like getting rid of gamma and a little bit of the extra pixels that you get when low light because this camcorder wasn't really designed for the extra low light, low lux. I'm sorry, but uh, you know it's still a good, good, still a good camera though. Yeah, I forgot to mention, the, um, the camcorder screen, the LCD, is very, very clear, crisp. You can actually read it out quite well in uh, overexposed sunlight or just very bright light. Okay, so now I want to click on, like, keep it steady. I want to click on main functions, which typically can also be accessed just by clicking right here. You got your recording program. So I forgot what AE stands for, but then let's just go back. I think it's auto exposure. It's probably what it is, auto exposure. You got portrait, sports, night scene, which works very well in low light. Snow, if I keep it steady, all right beach sunset works very well in sunset and like the actual sunset is very good i gotta say low light is very twitchy i gotta say it moves way too slow you move really fast or anything like that become like the actual device itself will still be trying to uh, register the movements i don't know maybe it's because of the slow shutter feature that you can't turn off but i don't know anyways there's a spotlight which also works very well and the fireworks, which I have not tested out yet. But I'm just gonna come back over here to the program. Okay, so also in functions, you have the ability to control the white balance, which can either be automatic, daylight, tungsten, or so you click it, custom. So you can actually set the white balance right here. And there it is. In fact, I was able to do this before. See, there's the icon right there for white balance. You can actually select like a certain subject or a certain point that you want to try to find the true white balance of, which is actually pretty handy. And then you also got the uh, motion tracker to track faces. You have the uh, controller or focus, which you can actually select. And it'll focus quite well and you can also record while you focus like so once you're in this area you can press the record button and it'll actually start recording but i can't do that because i don't have the sd card in yet which you know obviously is the whole purpose of me buying one yeah anyways oh, oh, oh sorry let's go back you can click the focus assistance which i believe goes by 
how far something is. Like if it's really far. Like this is for like portrait. I I assume like telephoto maybe, and the wide angle lens. Cause like if you're trying to do something like a mountain, or maybe it's far. And I don't know. I'm still learning about the camera. But yeah. Come back over here. <coughs> A really neat feature is the fact that you have control over the exposure, which you can also, I believe, control while you're recording, which is quite handy, if you would imagine. Okay, there you go. And you can scroll around to darken the image, or to reduce the exposure, or scroll to the right. Depending on all the light that you have available, you can brighten it very bright, but I think that's overkill, so I'm just gonna go back down to zero. Up, back here. Wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Or you can manually focus this as well, just by selecting a certain subject and just tapping anywhere on the screen. Okay, so also in the function, this time I'm just gonna use the home button right here in functions. Um, yeah, you, know, you have the power image stabilizer, which you can actually change back to, um, it's like it, it can be dynamic, um, and a few other ones. I'll have to go back to show you. Okay. Um, let me see. Also, in main functions, you can, uh, or I told you about the zoom. You can do this, change the zoom type, the optical. Advanced zoom, which actually just got an even wider shot, believe it or not. It's the optical, it's the 51. And then there's digital, which really sucks. So I didn't advise optical. I mean, I'm sorry, not optical. But I, I totally advise optical, just not digital. Okay, mental error, I'm sorry. Um, you can change the mic level, which is really neat. Because it has an audio level indicator, which can be set automatically or manually. Manually, see, I'm kind of getting in the yellow a little bit. I can change the, I guess, the intensity or, or the overall output or strength of the microphone. I'm not quite sure. But it pretty much just dictates whether you're getting into the reds. And, you know, you can scroll back and get yourself out of the reds and out of the yellows. Which I'm no microphone specialist, so I can't really help it there. And of course, because I manually set the microphone indicator or audio indicator, it's, you know, this is built in, of course. There it is, there being displayed. So I can go back to the functions, scroll down, um, change the mic level from manual to auto. Okay, so. Go back to home, see if there's one more that I missed out on. Like I said, decoration really isn't all that necessary. It's just, you know, if you're just really having fun. You can also pre-record, which is pretty nice. Really nice, actually, because obviously you don't actually have to um, have someone else record you. Unless it's, you know, unless you don't. Unless you don't have a tripod, I think. Did I say that right? I don't know. Anyways, yeah, but you gotta have a tripod and get like... And those really good still shots or really good still recordings and there's a review recording also but i can't access either one of them because i don't have an sd card in the darn device so yeah that's life huh okay so let's press the home button back um <clears throat> you can go on the other settings which has a self timer like i said um let's see if i can tilt this a little bit there's focus assistant, you can change the zoom speed, it's right here. Face detection and tracking, which is currently on. I'm gonna leave it that way because it's really handy. There's auto slow shutter on, which I'm still trying to figure out what that does. There's the fader settings, which you can change for like a different color. Um, there's on-screen markers, which is off currently. Um, yeah, this is better. There's the image stabilizer, which you can change whether it's dynamic, standard, or off, which I'm just gonna go back. Um, you can change the windscreen, but it really actually does work quite well, I gotta say. Things from automatic, which is turn it off, 
see if I can stay focused here. Yeah, there you go, we're focused here. Um, there's the microphone attenuator, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm still trying to figure out what that does, so I don't really know what that does. Maybe you do. Look it up. You could send me like a message. Okay, so recording mode, sorry. Now here it is. Just click SP. Automatically it's going to be in standard play, which is 7 megabytes per second. Long play, which is 5 megabytes per second, which is the slowest or the lowest of quality here. There's high quality, which is 12 megabytes per second. There's FXP, which is 17. And then there's maximum quality, which everybody seems to be using because it's, you know, like I guess the best of the best, but it really does run down your battery life really quickly. And not to mention the fact that the stop battery that comes with this thing only lasts about 15 to 30 minutes sometimes, you know, maybe less, maybe more. It all depends on the setting, so I can't really dictate that on an average. Here's your frame rate, which is currently at 60i. I don't really like 60i, but you can change over to 30 frames per second or 24, which is, I gotta say 24 is high end, but 30 is pretty much the ultimate standard. 60i, I don't really agree with, but I'm just gonna leave it on that setting currently because of the fact that I'm just doing an overview. Um, you can change the video snapshot length, which is right here. It's pretty much just like an image of the video, kind of like a thumbnail, kind of, you know. And, yeah, it's like right before the actual video itself, but don't really care about that too much. There's the rate scenes recording, which I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, you, can actually, you can actually check the available space in the memory, which tells you the total space. It actually tells you, like, what type of... Um, SD card it is, like it's a class 2, class 4, class 10, um, how many minutes and hours you have in the ABC HD, MP4 format, or even just in pictures, how many pictures you have remaining, like 1,000, 300, 200, and I gotta say, it's very, very accurate, it will tell you, like, the available space and the total space that you had, like, you know, how much you've used, I guess, or maybe just how much you have remaining, and also, like, the overall great amount. So this can be in either megabytes or gigabytes. It all can change depending on your SD card. You also have file numbering which uh, I'm just going to leave it in continuous. Yeah. So, yeah. You have your output on screen displays but uh, yeah I'm just going to leave that on. Language obviously you can change to a different one. LCD brightness you can also change that. LCD backlight. Um, mirror image, and then here is the AV headphones. Currently it's in AV, meaning it's just going to be placed outward, like it's going to be audio that's going to be coming out like the speaker that's located right there. And um, yeah, if you're going to be using the headphone jack, which I strongly recommend, just make sure you change this from AV to headphones because you're going to get some very annoying buzzing sound that's going to come from one side of your headphones while the audio that's going to be coming in from the front or the microphone is just going to be deafening everything together because it's going to be let alone annoying and of course very disturbing you can also change the volume which you know I guess I don't really have that feature yet because I don't have a pair of headphones in or just simply because of the fact that um, yeah I don't have an SD card in um, you can change the notification sound, which really can be helpful because we low volume. We're just turning it off completely, but for now I'm just going to leave it at its original settings. Um, you can change the custom control button, which I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's one of these buttons, or maybe it's one of these buttons. I don't know, I'll wait that. Um, you can also change the auto start decoration, which I have currently on for some reason. You even have a power saving mode, which is quite neat, gotta say. Um, currently it's on quick start, standby is like 10 minutes. Turn that off, it's up to you. Um, here's the, obviously the time zone. It's pretty neat. You change the date and time, so it's not like it's, oh yeah, it's the end of the world, not really. Battery info, mm, I can't quite explain why this does not work with this stock battery that
Okay, so we also have control for HDMI, which I gotta say is awesome, but you do have to, um, yeah, you're gonna probably wanna turn this on. Okay. And once you turn it on, you're gonna probably wanna change your channel. If you have an HDTV with an HDMI um, input, obviously that works. You will indeed need um, to change your TV settings to HDM3. So you just have to get used to your TV and work that out. Um, demo mode, which obviously I can't really use that well because I don't know what that is. The distance units, which is currently feet. You can change that, which you know, to whatever you're setting, and you can see all the settings. So, yeah, be set.